Hey everybody, today we're going to fill out the Kamala Harris Donald Trump map based on the current prediction markets. And I still apologize, I'm still trying to get my voice back. But in the meantime, since it looks likely that it's going to be Harris as the nominee for the Dems, we're going to fill out this map based on the stats for poly market. And keep in mind, this is the thing that can easily change hour to hour or minute to minute. Sometimes the markets are skittish and they can get spooked by new polls. But I did this previously for Biden versus Trump. This is going to be with Harris. And we have to fill out the map a little bit differently and i'm going to do it as follows the safe states the darkest colors those are going to be if there's at least a 50 point margin gap the likely states are going to be 25 to 49 percent the lean states are going to be 10 to 24 and the tilt states are going to be single digits under 10 percent another way to think about this might be how confident people are that a state is going to go one way or the other and they're willing to put their money on the line things can and probably will change so let's dive into this map and we'll start with the safe states and these are again going to be 50 points or more on the prediction market. Let's start with Harris. She's easily going to get Hawaii and then the Blue West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. Then after that, Colorado and New Mexico. Those are both over 50. She's going to get them safe. Then we can continue east and stop off in Illinois in the Midwest. Then in the East Coast, she's going to get Maine's first congressional district. And then Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. All those easy, solid blue states. No surprises there. Then we're going to do the safe states for Donald Trump. He's going to start off with Alaska. Then he's going to get Idaho, Utah, Montana, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, Nebraska at large, plus the first and the third congressional districts. Then Kansas, Oklahoma, then also Texas. That was clearly a safe margin, so he's also going to get that state. Then Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama. Then we've got Trump's home state of Florida. That is also going to be over a 50-point margin on the market, so he's going to get that safe. Then also South Carolina, Ohio, West Virginia, and finally Maine's second congressional district. So there's nothing too shocking there either. And also remember, these are not the margins. This is just what the markets are showing. Now we can go down to the likely states. And again, for the markets, these are going to be between a 25 and 49% margin. For Kamala Harris, she's got a few. She's going to get Minnesota. Then in the Northeast, she's going to get Maine at large. Then the Granite State of New Hampshire. Finally, South to Virginia. Those four states might have been on the radar for Trump prior to Biden dropping out. Now with Harris in there for now, those states look like they'd be secured for the Democrats. Now we can do the likely states for Trump, and he's got four of them. West Coast to East, he's got Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. All of those except for North Carolina would be flips and pickups for Trump. It's also kind of where things were at when Biden was still in the race. It remains to be seen if there's going to be significant movement if Harris is in there instead. Now we could go down to lean states. These are going to be much more competitive. These are going to be 10 to 24 cents on the markets. For Kamala Harris, she's got one, and that's going to be Nebraska's second congressional district. Trump won it in 16, Biden won it in 20. Since then, there's been redistricting, but it's moved away from the Republicans, and this Harris does have a small advantage. Then the lean states for Donald Trump, he's got two of them. It's going to be the Badger State of Wisconsin and the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. The Rust Belt is where all the action is. Both of those Trump won in 16, and he lost in 20. This time, so far, people are betting that they're going to flip back to Trump. And the last state is Michigan, and that's going to be a tilt margin. And that's under 10% on the market. And is it going to go to Harris, or is it going to go to Trump? It is actually going to go toward Trump. So with money on the line, this is what the final map would look like. That's 312 for Donald Trump, 226 for Kamala Harris. Now, a lot of these margins are borderline, especially in the Rust Belt. Those are close enough that they could go either way, but right now, Trump has the small edge. The Sun Belt states, including Nevada and Arizona, those also could go down to a lean margin. There's a few others that are borderline line as well. Some of them for Harris, some of them for Trump. But as of right now, this is where people are putting their money. It also does not seem entirely unreasonable to me. There might be an assumption that Harris would do a little bit worse in the Rust Belt with Biden out of the race. When I did this video about a month and a half ago, it was Biden that actually had the small edge in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Of course, the past six or seven weeks has been completely tumultuous, but Trump has generally maintained an advantage nationally as well as in most of the swing state polling. After his conviction, he dipped down slightly, but that's kind of just been a mild speed bump in the broader narrative. Anything can change. We've still got more than three months to go. I would want to wait at least a couple of weeks, if not another month, actually, before we see how Harris has affected the polling and the state of the race. Almost everybody's heard of her and have a little bit of a sense of what she's all about. Her favorables have been low, but maybe this is her time to reinvent herself. I expect her to do at least a little bit better than Biden at this point, given how much he bottomed out. So I think Dems are going to be rejuvenated that they've got somebody other than Biden dragging down the ticket. Will that spill onto other voters? 
that are not a fan of Trump or as Harris just so closely associated with the unpopular Biden administration that she's not going to make a dent in this race. We'll see what happens. It continues to be crazy times in politics. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this map based on the current prediction markets? Do you think this is how the election would go if it were held today? How does Harris change the dynamics of this race? How do you think it's going to look in maybe another month? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to help support the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.